Chapter 19 Fear of God Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Ecclesiastes 12.13 One day in AD 2007, I was working as a carpenter, installing crown molding and baseboard in a room at a retirement center. Suddenly, God began speaking to me and asked, Gabriel, do you know why people continue willfully sinning against me? I was still thinking of an answer when he answered for me. It is because they do not fear me, Gabriel. They have no concept or reality of the horrifying fire of hell. At those words, I was taken aback. I questioned, Lord, is this really you speaking to me because your words seem harsh? But he plowed on. Listen to me, son, as I explain what I am saying. If you ignite a massive bonfire on earth and told people when they sinned, disobeyed the Ten Love Commandments, they will be captured, bound, and held for fifteen minutes with their feet five inches from the roaring flames. How much sin do you think would still be occurring? Take, for instance, the sin of premarital sex, he continued. If you warned people that I will point their sexual immorality out to you, in other words, no one will be able to hide their sin and escape the fifteen minutes of fiery punishment, how much premarital sex do you think would still be happening? After everyone watched the first person caught sinning be held close to the scorching fire, screaming, writhing, and hollering in agony, with their eyes bulging in horror as the heat burned deeper and deeper into their boiling flesh, do you think people would still be itching to sin by having premarital sex? By now I was shocked, but I answered, No, Lord, they would be scared to death to fornicate. But Lord, I said, this is too cruel. Why are you telling me something like this? If I told this story to people, they would say I am a fearmonger. They would arrogantly chide back, God is love. He fumed, I am love. I am trying to save their soul, but they will not stop sinning. And it is only because they do not fear me, Gabriel. The truth is the fire of hell is already burning. The punishment is already awaiting all those who disobey my word, but people do not truly believe it strong enough to deter them from sinning. Many people say they believe in me, but by their continual, willful sin they prove they do not. They say they cannot help themselves for they are just sinners, but I say nonsense. One fifteen-minute hellish encounter beside that bonfire, and I guarantee the next time the opportunity to have premarital sex arose, they could and would control themselves. You would be amazed at how quick their spirit, mind, would recall the terrifying, painful experience, and they would run with their charred feet like a wild person from that potentially sinful situation. That is the fear of me that is missing in people's hearts today, Gabriel. That is the kind of fear and trembling that could and would work out my spirit children's salvation, obtain them eternal life, but they do not possess it. A raw fear of me is absent from my children. Willful sin will kill their soul, but they do not believe it. I gotta tell you, I was startled and dumbfounded by the time God finished speaking to me. But his alarming words would not leave my head. They churned in my spirit like a slow-moving hurricane. No matter how I viewed it, I knew he was right. People do not believe in God, love like that, I thought. Their fear of God is nowhere near that kind of intensity. Yet I knew the strong fear the Lord had described to me was the correct fear of God that would produce perfection, continual obedience to the Ten Love Commandments, in His Spirit children's hearts, which is the real action-based faith and good works we must do to obtain eternal life. I drove home from work that afternoon with the Lord's message still ablaze in my mind. When I got home, the phone rang. It was my next-door neighbor's daughter, Labrina. She lived about two miles away from her parents and me and was calling from her house just to chat. Well, since God's word still satiated my heart, I shared with her what God had told me that morning, and she was silent. But when I told her the story, I personalized it by saying, if I built a big bonfire in my front yard... Needless to say, the story's gruesomeness and graveness put a quick damper on any kind of frivolous chit-chat, so we talked briefly and hung up. Then, I lied down for an afternoon nap. But, 
Within less than an hour, the phone's ringing woke me up, and I was surprised to hear Labrina's voice again. Turns out, she had driven over to her parents' house and was sitting in their driveway in her car on her cell phone. Look out your front door, she said excitedly to me. When I opened my front door, my jaw dropped. I stood in shock, beholding the sight about 80 feet from my eyes. A car was sitting on the street across from my house, completely engulfed in flames. I am not talking just the hood area, I mean the entire car. The massive flames were leaping 30 feet into the air. The bonfire God had spoke about to me earlier that morning, and that I had just spoken about to Labrina less than an hour earlier, was now burning in front of my house. A few people were calmly standing far back away from the car, obviously the car's occupants, so I knew no one was being hurt. Therefore, I left my front door open and sat down in the living room. I sat there for over ten minutes in astonishment and horror, watching the gigantic fire through my storm door until the fire trucks arrived. In those few miraculous minutes, I realized God was physically confirming what he had told me earlier that day was 100% directly from him. Consequently, I am warning you today, with a heavy heart, to fear God and obey his ten love commandments. For unbearable hellfire is awaiting all unrepentant sinners. Let me ask you a question you probably never pondered. Why did God create the world in six days? Do you think he had no logic, motive, or purpose behind using that specific number of days? Do you think he just placed a bunch of numbers in a hat and nonchalantly drew one? Or do you believe the cosmos required that precise number of days to be completed as if God could not have created it in one, two, five, or any other number of days. Friend, you should know better. God can do anything. Which brings us back to the original question. Why did God create the world in six days? The answer to this mystery is contained in the Bible and its gradual, albeit secret, uncovering in story after story leads to the stunning prophetic title of Gabriel Ansley Erb's book, Undeniable Biblical Proof Jesus Christ Will Return to Planet Earth Exactly 2,000 Years After the Year of His Death. But far more important than merely discovering this fact, Gabriel's book will fully elucidate and crush all confusion concerning what a person must do to obtain eternal life. For it will illuminate the true spiritual meaning behind every detail God controlled to happen in the ancient Bible stories. So sit back and hold on, because Gabriel's message is going to be a life-changing ride. Order your copy today in paperback or ebook form from Amazon.com.